What is up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode. Hey, guys, it's Nate. And I'm Scott. And this week, we have special guest Tiffany of the Funko Corner. Say hello, Tiffany. Hello, everybody. Welcome, oh. Tiffany. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining yeah. the podcast. Welcome to the Thank show. You for letting me come. So if this is if this is your first SDS Guys video you have listened to, welcome to the channel. Uh, we are a weekly podcast where we sit around, shoot the shit, and talk about anything geeky, nerdy, and cool. And this week is going to be a very Funko Pop heavy discussion because I said, as you can see behind Tiffany right now in her little zoomed out window, uh, she is one epic collector. <laughs> yes, Amazing. I am. That means they're, they're scattered all over the floor right now. I mean, I, there's boxes. They're, they're everywhere. I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> so let's go ahead and say hi to this, some people in chat. Well, we got a busy chat going on. We got official scope. What's going on? Official scope. We have geek girl finds. We have butt wasted, but wasted. What's, <laughs> up, man? what's up, Ed? Uh, I love the username. Well, we have team collector. We have Russ man. 80. What's going on, Russ? Uh, we have Pencil Gladiator. Pencil Gladiator, what's going on, man? D. Kimster, Iron Archer, Only Emily, Casual Unboxing, Nerd Spithing, mm -hmm. Denny McGuire, Irish Treasure, Denny McGuire. Did they, already, they already say Bears and Tanks? Bears and Tanks. Oh, Bears and Tanks, sorry. International Correspondent, Chris Madden. Yep. Hey. <laughs> All right, so welcome everybody to the chat. So this week's going to be a, an awesome episode, like I said. As you said, we have our special guest. And then... Later on, midway through the show, we're actually going to be doing uh, the winning announcement for our giveaway, which was the vaulted Dr. Doom uh, Future Toys exclusive. Funko Pop. Vaulted, valued at a little over $100. So. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What kind of giveaway Ooh. is that, Jeremy? It's the Super Mega Funko Pop Grail giveaway. Did you say <laughs> Super Mega Funko Pop Grail giveaway? I think he said Super Mega Funko Pop Grail giveaway. He did say Super Mega Funko Pop Grail giveaway. I did say Super Mega <laughs> Funko Pop Grail giveaway. Wow, that's a mouthful. Um, Larry, <laughs> we just, we, honestly, we, we did it well. More complicated we did it well. And it never needs to be. Like, th th just for anyone who's probably tuning in recently, this was a stupid joke that we made during our first giveaway. And we have continued the tradition with every giveaway that we've done up until this point. I will not let it die. <laughs> that's no, my no. That's my that baby. Larry's name, nom de plume, right yeah. there. That's like everything that he is known for is this <laughs> silly exchange. It's it's my stick. It, you got to stick with it. I think it's amazing. I, I don't know. care what anyone else says. We we have an official order for anyone who's not listening. Like, if you notice, we all go in the same order every time. It's, it's been alpha, established. It's alphabetical because we're not smart enough to do anything besides alphabetical. <laughs> and even that, we don't get right all the time. It's true. It's tough. It, it, it is tough. And sometimes, like I said, like I think it was like last week, the week before Scott figured out his name. Like things things happen. Yeah. It oh, it happens every day. Scott's at yeah. in the bottle of scotch. Well, yeah. No, the, the sad thing is like. We are not immune to fucking up. Like that's that, that's a standard. Like we're going to we're going to mess it up at any point. We are human. It happens, and oh. we're also generally intoxicated. So there's that. <laughs> there's nothing better than a podcast where you're slightly intoxicated. It just makes the world go round and makes. Oh it yes, it's kind of a necessity at this point. All across. <laughs> the all right, let's kick this off. Let's like I said, let's get what everyone's talking about. Let's get to our special guest, Tiffany. What is going on? Oh, you know, um, wondering why I haven't pot packed any of my collection aside from one, two, three, four, maybe five, six boxes. Um, yeah, <laughs> and I I just bought three to four pops yesterday, so it's just like it never ends. It never ends. Nice. I mean, I just can't stop <laughs> so talking about that so so obviously you're, you're in the middle of a move so anybody who's following uh you know tiffany Chandler right now at the funko corner make sure to go sub her up if you haven't already which i'm sure everyone in the chat already has but if you haven't make sure to head over there uh the, the, her, the uh, link you know. is the link is in the notes super easy click it sub her up <laughs> absolutely so if you guys that, have your own channels throw them in the chat everybody share the subs shout Ooh. out saturday shout out, shout out saturday, saturday. So go with it. I, I'm looking at Pencil Gladiator brings up. He says he's uh, staring at her collection and just keeps getting more and more jealous. Everything behind you is, is quite beautiful here. Um, so I, I want to ask the first big question here. 
I, I've seen all the pictures that you post up on Instagram that have those this walls lined with things. If you had a rough estimate, how many pops would you say that you have? I give the estimate right now of sixteen hundred. Nice. So, yeah, it's it's an so if you took Larry's number of pops and my number of pops, added them together, and then doubled it, <laughs> then you'd have her, then you'd her have number. It. Right? And I feel like I have a lot of pops. <laughs> yeah, I have like, a quarter a quarter of how many the Funko collectors like, so, talking about. Yeah, um, yeah. I think Cletus made the comment that he has one of the biggest collections on on YouTube. And um, and I was like, well, I have the second biggest. But he, he includes stuff like his mini mystery minis and like everything Funko. That's just pops. Yeah. Just pops. There's there's no mystery minis, there's no plushies, there's nothing. That just pops. That's impressive. Because if we want to start adding all the other things, then I don't even want to even get to that number. <laughs> like, I, that, so. that, yeah. that's a scary, we get to, to a scary number to, like motion at that point. <laughs> yeah, because it's not like you yeah, don't like, have... My insanity? Like, you, you, have do you have Dorbs, you have Mystery Minis, right? You have super cute plushies. You've got it all. It's just the 1600 mm -hmm, in the pop category. Yeah. So pop, 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 yeah. How long have you uh, been collecting pops? Like, when did you start getting into it? I think I officially started in 2014. Um, nice. I bought my first ever pop in 2011, though. Oh, awesome. What was and, that? But I, it was Sinestro. I am a fan of the Green Lantern movie only because of Sinestro and Mark Strong. That's the only reason I love that movie. Because um, I know everybody's going to hate on me for that. But um, <laughs> I, actually, I actually, no shit, pushed aside that number one Loki from Thor got a thunder to get to Sinestro. Cause I hadn't seen Thor yet. Oh, and then right. I had to buy him for 150 bucks um, yeah. about three years later. That's funny. Cause you're like, yeah, green lantern. <laughs> yeah. So it's Sinestro. You... I don't know who yeah. Loki is. Yeah. Okay, this guy's <laughs> I ended up dumb. making my cat Loki. Yeah. So when you right. saw that movie, is that when you went out and you're like, okay, I got to get this pop. Or is it when you saw the price? No, so and you're like, oh actually... crap. <laughs> Well, so when I got when I left Cuba, I went to Charleston, and I wanted this huge um, room of movie memorabilia. And then I found these guys, and I found that they had a Loki, and I just started doing research. Found out the prices, and I literally said, "No way am I paying that much for that that pop." And then I don't know what happened after that, but here I am. Right, so. one thing led to another. And yeah, I think we can you know, all understand I, that. We all have our own, you know, collections that we do. So you start somewhere and then it just takes off and you end up in another place. You're like, I don't know how I got here, but I'm having fun. Tiffany at least well, has... I, I started with Barbies. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so Tiffany has a way better story than I do. Um, so, so we discussed my first pop uh, sort of a few episodes ago on the stream. Um, so she's talking about, you know, hey, you know what? I'm into comics. I'm into I'm into Green Lantern. You know, Sinestro is awesome. I want to. Anyway, I went and grabbed that. That 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 Sinestro was mine. <laughs> my first pop was I wanted to fuck with somebody to make them think I was a brony. <laughs> Follow my little pony, Rainbow Dash. Hey hey hey! I yeah. I I had the Fluttershy, so I was right there with you. <laughs> that wasn't my first pop, but I bought one alongside you to make sure that we would join in this debauchery together. It was amazing. So awesome first Funko Pop story. So um, still having me is on my desk at work right now, and people make fun of me every day for him. And I just say that that Pop's been in the Navy longer than half of you guys. So <laughs> there you go. Amazing. You just gotta own yeah. it, you know. It's like one of those things, mm -hmm. you know. Hate on me if you want, but I love what I'm doing. Well, at least I do. I'll say this: at least the reason that you like the Green Lantern movie is the only saving grace of that movie, because. Sinestro was yes. awesome, and he was the only thing that was actually good out of that. Everything else was a steaming pile of garbage, but at least Mark Strong knocked that shit out of the park. So I, I, I can't I hate on man. somebody. I cannot hate on somebody who actually has a good uh, a good reason for for liking that movie. Yeah, I agree. I try to explain it at work, and they're just like, "Who's Mark Strong? Who's who's Sinestro? What are you talking about?" Because they weren't paying attention to the movie, and I'm like, "You have no idea." Plus the yeah. the Collector, the the director's cut of that movie is actually very very good. Well, that's awesome. I, I haven't actually given that movie a watch in a while, so I, I, I have to go back and watch that. I'm actually just looking at the chat right now. Nate, it's blowing up. Nate, you have 
you have everybody loving on you right now. I know. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm getting a lot of love in the chat here. I appreciate that. It's got to be the beard. I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> but we, so, we actually did get a couple of questions in the chat. Um, so Johnson Riverdead asked, do you plan on keeping all your pops? Do you plan on just keep growing your collection? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the collection will grow and grow and grow. The only time that the, if I'm facing like being kicked out of my house and living on the street, the collection goes like without question. Right. Um, but I mean, I am gainfully employed by the government, so I have no stresses of ever not having a paycheck. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah. I will always be like, I've thought about quitting, but I can't, can't, can't do it. It's just, can't. <laughs> There's always something new that you have to have. Right. No, I, that's, totally I think that's the, the problem with Funko, though, is that their speed of new items is way more than most other collections. Like, that's the one thing I have to give them credit for is as soon as you think, like, okay, I'm going to have a breather, they have another, you know, like series or another group or something pops up just days after something they're, else. They're perfect. They, they line it up perfect. Well, and I think that's the thing that, that got me into it, honestly, from the very beginning. So, yeah, you know, I, I joke around that, you know, my first pop was Rainbow Dash, which it actually was. But at the same point in time, never in a million years would I have thought that I would have had a Jay and Silent Bob pop from Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Like I said, that was, that was my first, like, fall in love with this pop. I'm like, okay, I'm like, there's a Kevin Smith pop. I'm a huge Kevin Smith fan. They said they've idolized him pop form many times. And it's like some of the other licenses that they have. So I'm just looking at my, my collection right now. Uh, there's never in a million years where I thought they would have had, you know, like Chucky and this, like I said, all these other different like horror icons or Sam from trick or treat um, licenses that, that are, that are would have never seen the light of day if they, if they didn't have I said, the Funko license and actually to, to bring them into toy form. Dude, seriously, just look at one of the last things that they did for uh, Toys R Us with Jeffrey. Like, they they made toys of Jeffrey the giraffe for God's sakes. Like, yep. who other than like the you random stuffed animal? Yeah, like things you never would imagine would have something. They bring it out. Yeah, my favorite That's is my my two go tos are Fast and the Furious because I love Fast and the Furious and Saved by the Bell. Right? Awesome. Who would ever guess that there's going to be a little doll of Zach Morris? Kelly. Kelly Kapowski, baby. Kelly, baby. I know, I know, I know a, a series that Larry would buy probably the entire set of. Well, one specifically, if they ever came out with it, is a Wonder Year set. Oh, yeah. oh man. Yeah. Larry would be all over <laughs> Okay. <that. laughs> no, like, I'm going to amend that. You Any series from like late 80s early 90s i think is going to catch larry's attention who's the just boss? Like, 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 yeah who's the boss the the like, yeah so now, now Tim, is there. that sure. brings up a great question though so i said it is there a series of thing of basically a pops that you would want that hasn't been created yet and if so what would that series be you asking me yes yep put you on the spot oh uh -huh. <laughs> Let me look at all these that I have here. Um, I always refer to my collection as series of pops. Oh, um, I, they already made Resident Evil pops, but I want more. Oh, more Resident Evil. Awesome. Definitely want. Uh, they've got seven games there. They can make more than Jill Valentine and freaking Leon Kennedy. They got so many characters. I want them to make more. I know the series already exists, but um, or. Well, if you could pick or, one character for them to make, what would it be? For from Albert Resident Wesker. Evil. Albert Wesker. Ooh, that's a good pick. Wesker. I have yeah. a custom. I have a custom pop that someone made for me, and I had DC Douglas, who's the voice of Albert Wesker, sign him. Um, cost me a hundred some bucks, but I have my own custom Albert Wesker. Worth that's, it. Because I love awesome. him that much. Yeah, that's cool. Worth it completely. <laughs> I was gonna say you don't want from uh, like the the you know the block of tofu from Resident Evil Two running around. <laughs> you know you don't want that in pop form. <laughs> No, <laughs> dude, don't don't laugh. Like it's probably going to be a thing. It, you know what? They did confirm that it is in the remake that you can play as the big block of tofu. So there may be, dude. You slap slap a limited edition sticker on that, and people eat it up. Now, Larry, you can't speak more than the truth. Of that so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out some NECA stuff. NECA made Ooh. basically the meat 
that Rocky punched. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's a, yeah. A figure of just a rack of meat. And it was a limited edition figure. And that thing sells for like $2,000. <laughs> it's true. literally a slab of meat. <laughs> so I, I, I could totally see that they could actually make a block of tofu. Well, and Funko did the plushy, uh, like sticks of butter from Five Nights at Freddy's. So like, honestly, like tofu pop, not completely out of the question. Yeah, I could totally see that happening. <laughs> For sure. We're getting to that point where if you can imagine it, like chances are they're just going to do it because they can do whatever they want. Like that, right? Like that Jurassic Park bowl bloom pop where he's like laying down. Uh, like nobody would ever imagine that before, but somebody drew it up and it made it a thing. Yeah. And it's like one of the most popular pops ever. Like the crazy stuff is what's totally getting people's attention now. Yeah. Well, and that, and yeah. like you said, someone brought it up in the, the, the chat here, but Resident Evil 2's remake and they have a whole new character models for almost everyone that was in that original is coming out in what January. So I'm going to assume that uh, there's going to end up being some new pops for that. I mean, that's a perfect opportunity to drop some new ones. Yeah. I'm excited for that. Seeing that small bit of footage from E3 looks awesome. Do you guys know when the last resident evil game came out? Has it been a while? No, oh, no, they had the yeah. It was this last year. They did that oh, okay. first person version that yeah. was amazing and brought it back to horror. So they're using a, a similar. Scary as yeah, yeah. But this yeah, new exactly. one's gonna this new one's gonna be a whole new level. So yeah, it, yeah. It, so you're right, it'll probably happen. Yeah, so we got a question from the chat. So kind of like talking about like chases and different things like that. There, what, uh, so from Super Anime Unboxing Wolf. How many chases do you have, Tiffany? Do you know how many chases? Uh, surprisingly. I don't think I have any more than 20. Okay. I don't chase chases. If you can believe that, I don't. I mean, I have like one or two, and then I buy them at conventions, but I'm an exclusive chaser. I can believe it because I watched your rant after you went hunting for that panda pool. Was it this week, I think? Earlier this week. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh nice. It was this week. Oh, my God. That. So to add on to that rant, I found out yesterday that those jerks they had the chases in their hands they were holding them in the store for their friends to come pick them oh, and wow. i can't say anything when i'm in my uniform and then i found that out yesterday and i was like oh my god i would have totally just grabbed this thing out of their hands like you can't hold things in the store and wait and loiter in the store i was so mad yeah because all my hot topic ladies were like you would have gotten a chase and i was like whatever i'm over it Especially and they all you... saw the video and they're like, "We love you." <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, awesome. They watch your channel. That's that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, we uh, like I said, I, I know I'm kind of the same way. Like, there's there's a couple of things that I've I think I think the last like chase that I actually waited for, uh, just because so there's there's certain things that I said I'm not a completist in regards to like any type of lines of sets, um, but like there, there's there's things yeah. that I like. So I have like I said a, a horror collection of pops. So the last like chase that I really wanted that I actually waited for was that Krampus chase uh, back in oh. uh, I got one that from I got so lucky. Um, but other than that like I said if, uh, everything else that I've gotten has been literally just I looked across it um, like I said that goes Thanks. from like I said, my Green Goblin to like I said the, okay I, I take that back I, I did I did I did buy another chase specifically for the chase i actually bought an entire case just to get the chase <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah that that hellboy that yeah, was yeah. hellboy yeah i'm a huge hellboy fan uh from the but comic. you got a you got a really good deal on that right those six pops so yeah, I paid 46 bucks for an entire case of pops so yeah. and plus i mean and honestly you're guaranteed, you're guaranteed one chase with that so yeah and that was a really cool chase too so i think that was a good idea so are there now, any chase? They there come any out with a chase like Loki, then yeah, I'm gonna get it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, are there any chases that you're still looking for? Uh there's one one chase only because I am in love with Lord of the Rings, and it's the Gollum chase, which I think it's a ridiculous chase because I'm tired of these chases where it's like, oh, Gollum's normal, but this chase he has a fish in his hand. Yeah. I I still need him though. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm so, oh, and then the, yeah. So um, I saw your awesome collection. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jeremy. No, I was, I was just gonna say I'm like I like the chases that completely change it around. Like so, for example, that Mr. Yes. Bean chase that came out. Like I said, he's got an entire turkey on his head. Like it's yeah. completely different, right? From, yeah. from the original pop. That's the like one so, I still need. I was gonna ask Jeremy. I was gonna ask you which one you still needed. 
Um, that's that's my number one one to chase right now is that Mr. Bean. A- anything you're looking for, Jeremy? Um, honestly, probably it's going to be that that panda pool eventually. Um, j- just because like I said, I'm a, I'm a huge Marvel guy. Um, but other other than that, like I said, nothing really that I'm like I'm like man, I have to have this. I honestly might even just pick up the standard version. Um, like I said, because I I really don't care. I just like the the actual like shape of it. So uh, I need that NWO Scott Hall too from WWE. Too sweet. So, uh, Funko Corner, I, kn- I saw your awesome video of your huge collection of Batman pops. Is there any other character that when you see a pop, you're just like, I'm buying it no matter what? Uh, Loki. Loki? Uh, so, I, I have this rule. If they're tattooed on my arm, then then yeah, I'm buying them. So, it's Joker, <laughs> Harley Quinn, Sinestro, Loki, Winter Soldier, uh, Albert Wesker, and Smog. Those are what's tattooed on me. I have all the Lokis. I don't have all the Jokers. I don't have all the Har- I have all the Harleys, but that silver Harley. And then, yeah. And then there's only one Sinestro. Nice. Well, I need the I need the metallic Sinestro from San Diego Comic Con. I turned him down at Phoenix Comic Con two years ago because he wanted three hundred bucks for him, and I said no deal. So just waiting for that right deal to come along. Yeah, yeah eventually yeah, it'll but- go down. I wait. Yeah, like I was just about to say, like kind of go down, like eventually, eventually, but still, like short term, like the prices are still going up, up, up on some of that stuff, right? If people are going to spend four hundred bucks on a, uh, like a blue chrome Batman that just came out, yeah, something more like that Loki man, like just, there's less of them out there. It's hollow. That blue oh, chrome yeah. Batman is hollow. It is the know. worst pop ever. Oh my god! Sorry, rant. <laughs> no, I, I completely agree. I Jeremy, own one. Took about the box and it, it, it's crap. It's complete crap. I had Sorry. the I had the New York City one, right? New York City Comic Con, the crappy one. Um, but yeah, same thing. I took it out of the box. I'm like, I was not impressed. So if you guys don't own one of those Chrome Batmans, eh, you, you might be a little disappointed. No, I, I completely agree. Uh, that that's probably I'm my like- my favorite, like crazy story of crazy events that have happened. So, you, so Tiffany, you're just talking about, I said the crazy events that happened at, at, at the hot topic you were at. So when, honestly, our very first Funko hunt as a channel um, was ridiculous. So I said it was during New York Comic Con this past season. And so we knew that the very thing that was going to be popular was that that black chrome Batman, that ever, everyone was going to want that. So I'm like, you know what? I want this part of the collection just because I said I can, so I can have it as my, as, as my base collection. So we actually struck me and Larry st- struck it out for that. Um, I have never seen it's, it's, it was like putting blood in the water. There was, <laughs> the table. there's pops flying everywhere. All, all, all crazy up there. It's on video. So if you ever check out, if you ever want to check it out the video, it's on, it's on, it's on our channel under our fungal hunt playlist. Like it's nuts what the people want for this Batman. Um, is there any pop, out there, like I said, that that you said, you know, no matter what, I say you'd wait, you know, sixteen hours in line if you had to have it. Is is there any pop out there that you want? You know what? This is worth the wait. This is this is going to be. You know what? I don't care what I have to do to get this. This is going to be mine. Uh, no, um, because I've made a commitment to myself that I'm not going to waste my entire life over these things, even though I collect them so much. Um, but I will, I mean, I did a video of how long I waited just to get Sebastian Stan to sign my Winter Soldier pop. That I will wait for. Other than that, I can, my mindset is just like, okay, if I can't get it now, I'll get it online, I'll get it at a convention, I'll get it eventually. So, I'm, I have other things that I can do with my time instead of waiting there with nasty collectors who just want to flip them. So, there's, there's nothing, unless it was go Loki. I would do it for Go Loki. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh, what's the longest you've ever waited in line? Do you know approximately? Uh, um, for I waited in line for Sebastian Stan for over seven and a half hours. Ouch. Yeah. Oh man. But you got mm-hmm. to see him, so but that's yeah. I that's got a, I got a brief it. photo op out of it. Uh, I got front row seats to his panel, but I mean, for the amount of time I got to sit there and say. I love you so much, and then you pushed along. Was it was worth it? It's totally worth <laughs> it. I'll do it again. Yeah. That's so. awesome. That's cool. So it keeps you coming back. You know, it's moments like that. Even if you had to wait seven hours. It's like it was worth it because I got to do it. 
And, you know, I'm a huge fan. I mean, so. how, many, how many times do you get that opportunity? Like, I'm going to go meet Tom Hiddleston next Saturday. And I jumped on that opportunity because I might never have that opportunity again. He's going to sign the Go Loki Pop. And that'll be like one in a, I don't know how many. There's 480 of those things. So I'll have one that's signed by him. And it's priceless at that point. So yeah, there, there can't be too many of those out there because number one, he's not around. Number two, even if you were in the same city that he's in for one of these cons, like you probably don't have that pop. Yeah. And when I pulled out that winter soldier pop, there were people around me going, you shouldn't have brought that with you because it's worth so much money. Cause I brought the, the rarest of the rare, like, Oh, someone's going to steal it. And I was like, try me. Right. <laughs> like <laughs> You don't know me. So, but it's safe and sound on its shelf over there with all the other sign pops. So that's awesome. How many how many sign pops do you have? One, two, ah. <laughs> Sebastian Stan, Oded Fair, Jason David Frank, Sean Schimmel, Christopher Sabat, Alex Kingston, Billy Piper, Carl Urban, DC Douglas, and then Sean Astin. Ten. Ten. Uh, let, let me ask you like Carl Carl Urban, is it on a Star Trek pop or a Judge Red Pop? Judge Dredd. Oh yeah. yes, <laughs> he was fantastic. I freaking love Judge Dredd. Yeah, the, he is the best. He is the only Judge Dredd for me. I'm not doing the I'm the like no. I, like <laughs> I love the campy version of it, but when they redid it, I was in love from oh, loved it. So real quick, not to kill the Funko Pop vibe. However, friend of the channel Brian Rainey is in the chat. If you guys don't know, he's had some health issues, but he just got some good news. And I just wanted to pause and say, we're happy to see your name in the chat, Brian. Glad you're feeling better, man. Hey, Brian, man. Like I said, and it's, and yeah. the news the news that you just dropped, dude. Um, we've all been worried about you, so for real. I, so, I am so glad to hear what you just said. So yeah, for sure, man. That's awesome man. news. Great to hear it. Thanks so much for joining. We missed you, man. Dude, we totally missed you, man. Like we we actually, we actually got something in the plan in the works in the plans for you so that uh that means Scott are picking up here in a couple of weeks. So yes, uh, yeah. So it's something, something excited that that, that we've uh, got going for you. So uh, we'll we'll, we'll so, message you. It. Everybody, we're, please go check out Brian's channel. Yeah. he's got an awesome channel. Yeah, yeah dude, we're Great. we're grabbing something uh, end of June for you here, and then we'll throw it in the mail. So, uh, OG <laughs> super mega nice fan yeah. Brian yeah. Rainey. He's one of the originals. That's for yeah. sure. He's should we nice make person. should we make a new super mega fan? I, yeah. I think we should. I think it's time, Jeremy. Yes, it is time. <laughs> Let's it announce time. the winner of our Super Mega Funko Pop Grail giveaway. We've uh, held you guys on here for half an hour, just trying to pad that run to, or that watch time. Thank so you, man. let's go ahead and and throw up the uh, the winner yeah, here. I'm honestly. excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie, guys. Like the, we we held it for a reason. Scott, uh, keeping it real. I'm excited. Talk I'm, amongst yourself like, for like, like I said, let me get screen share going. Uh, yeah, so, so go ahead and shoot another question out while yeah. uh, while let's get this set up. Yeah. So no, Jer Jeremy and everyone else likes to pretend like, oh, we're gonna make a fan. No, like we're we're padding the watch time. Sorry. <laughs> so I, I have a question. Um. So when did the Funko Pop Corner start? When did you start your YouTube channel? How how did you start your YouTube channel? Like why why YouTube? So. I was watching Top Pops with my friends and it was his like 600 plus video and they're just like, you should do YouTube because you have twice as many pops. And I was like, yeah, I don't have the confidence. And then around two weeks later, I was actually diagnosed with depression and anxiety. And this has actually helped me get through a lot of my bullshit in my head. So I started with the, the pops on the turnstile. And then I did the room tour. And then one day I was just like, you know what? Screw it. Get behind the camera. Do it. And then people were liking it. And I was getting good feedback. And then it helped my confidence at work. And then it helped me come out of my shell as a person. So I've only been doing it, I think, three, four months. Yeah. Even though it says I started YouTube 2015. But right. at least seriously, you know, right? Since you yeah. I, I do remember yeah. you, I, I do remember you had the single pop just on the turnstile and it, it, it right that's when I found your channel. Like we're old school <laughs> yeah. fans. Like I've I've been watching oh. since those videos. But then you're right. I, I did notice more and more and more uh videos showing your face and right I I'd say we're kind of the same way. 
Like we still do most of our unboxing videos with our hands. Um, okay. I just think it's easier to see the items, but yeah. I also so, don't want my hands yeah. on the screen I'm every like, day. Jeremy, I have one camera, so the it's the camera has to focus on the stuff, and the the only way I'm doing it is from behind. I can't <laughs> see what the fuck I'm doing if the camera's facing me. <laughs> yep. You just love to do it from behind, Scott. I uh, that's that's that's, that's my for, that's my forte. Larry, Larry, I'm uh, Larry said that. Larry, Larry said Larry said the dirty joke, not me. Let the record show. <laughs> All right, you guys ready for this? Let's I'm let's ready. get a winner, man. I'm so excited. Let me get one. Give me one second here. Uh, I'm gonna laugh if I win. <laughs> it could happen. I already I already told told them, but if. If my name pops up, pure luck, I'm not right. going to take it. Somebody so else can take it. I'm going to gleam here. Can you see my screen? Let me see. see oh, yep. All good. All right. So one second here. Can you see my screen still? Okay, perfect. Yes. So let's go ahead and select our winner. We're going to go ahead and go to our winner section here. Go and we'll go to winners. We're going to draw our one prize. So we have a total of 134 potential users. Let's go ahead and draw this. Drawing now. Charles Anderson. Charles Anderson. Congratulations. Yay. Charles. Congratulations. Charles. Anderson. Yeah. I don't know anyone's names in the chat. Is anyone named Charles in the chat? Yeah, is Charles here right Me. now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Charles, congratulations. You have won. Um, he'd won by watching a video. So, when we talk, talk about watching videos, this is what we're talking about. Like I said, a lot of these enter, a lot of these people who win win by like so the, those daily entries of, of watching videos. Yep. We always say, get those daily entries in, kids. Charles, yeah. get back to the channel. Daily entry, man. Watch our extra videos. One himself at a super mega pop grail. Yeah. So, uh, Charles, I said, go ahead and get, so what we'll do is that it will going to create a separate uh, winner video. Uh, make sure you watch that. Um, get in contact with us. You have two weeks to get in contact with us. Contact at sdsguys.com or you can DM Sorry, up, or you can DM <laughs> us on our social media channels at SDS Guys, on Twitter at SDS Guys, on Instagram at SDS Guys, on Facebook at the SDS Guys. And I've been Jeremy from the SDS Guys. Ooh, well, well done. done. Well done, Jeremy. Congrats, it's like, Charles. It's like and you went to the Larry School of YouTube shilling. No, I just like it so that Jeremy doesn't have to create an extra video. He just has to cut out what he just said. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. I love how Larry's like, by the way, I taught you guys all how to show, okay? So don't forget that. That is true. Uh, but yeah, congrats, Charles. Thanks to everybody who joined all the daily entries. We got a ton of entries. Thank you so much. If you guys didn't win, you know we like to do things super mega. We're going to do another giveaway at some point. So don't get your hopes up. We will be doing more giveaways. So we appreciate it. You mean don't get your hopes down? Don't get your hopes yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't get your hopes, hopes up. Whoops. Don't get your hopes up that you're going to win. Uh, Fuck everybody in the chat. You're not going to win this shit. never win, so don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is the worst phrasing you could have said. Oh, jeez. Talking about shilling real quick, except because I'm, we're, we're going we're gonna to do another shill here real quick. I just like it. Larry inspired me regarding the shill because now my, my job regarding shilling, I can just push a button and it shows up in the chat. I push a yeah. button. It shows up in the chat. I push a button. It shows up in the chat. Boop. <laughs> You're um, so fancy. So, Tiffany, while we're on the, to the topic of shilling, I said you're on some different social media platforms. So, go ahead and shill away your stuff. Uh, so, the only ones that I really have, uh, I have Twitter and all that bullcrap, but Instagram is my big one, which is I'm under Epic Funko Collector. I thought about changing my YouTube name to Epic Funko Collector, but that's harder than it sounds to do. Um and then I do have a Facebook page that was titled The Collector Showcase. That was in my earlier years, forgive me. Um, but mainly Instagram. It's just YouTube and Instagram. Um, if you guys ever want to see me or talk to me, you can always send me messages on Instagram. Epic Funko Collector. I usually post things, and every once in a while there's a cat in there. So if you like Funko Pops and cats, Instagram, that's my page. Who Go doesn't love my cat Funko Pops and Cats? Funko Pops and Cats. Yeah. That sounds that's, glorious. That's actually a good channel name, too. You can just call it Funko Pops and Cats. I'm there. Yeah. They're always making an appearance. Jack was in here earlier. Loki's asleep on my bed. Orion's asleep on my bed. So you got a one in three chance of, of seeing a cat. <laughs> I love how you have a cat named Loki. That's great. Yeah, I have a dog named Drax. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, I got... 
Leia and Thor. <laughs> Aww. Uh, so let's let's continue some Q and A. So one one question that I have, and I said, ever since I saw it, this is this is the picture that I literally just sat there mm -hmm. in awe when I saw it uh, in your videos and on your Instagram was your rainbow wall. So basically, when you did the rainbow challenge, when you organized it by color, how long did that take? That like I said, it, it's it's probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. It need, so when you when you get it set back up, like I said, if you're gonna set it back up, like that, you need to take a just straight on picture of it. That needs to be a wallpaper um, because I said that I, thing was amazing. I do have a high quality photograph of it that I sent to Ryan at Jetta Patrol, um, and uh, I can send it to you guys. The the you the the Instagram photo doesn't do it justice. I think I started it after I heard about his contest, and I think I finished it about it took me a week only because i have a full-time job mm. so i have to go to work and you know military life 40 to 60 plus hours a week so i would nitpick here and there but it took me about a week maybe maybe eight hours tops but it is harder than it looks oh wait, I, I, totally Jer I jeremy did you imagine. ever build a wall like uh, jeremy and i talked about it did you ever end up building a wall jeremy i never built a wall yeah, uh I I built like, like a mini. I built a mini wall, but it like I have far less pops than you, and I wasn't trying to color coordinate. And it took me like a good two hours. And then like mm -hmm. my plan was just to take a picture and then take it down. Like right then, it took me another two hours to take the stupid thing down. Like it's a lot of work. It looks cool, but man, is it a lot yeah. of work. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me let me ask you this. So when, once I said it, when you're going through all the colors, um, did you did you always find that one that you just got irritated? I'm like, man, I already did this color. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it, now we gotta it figure went, out. Bro, it went back into other colors, so it went. It kind of went back into the rainbow a little bit, and uh, uh, you had, you I had got to reverse the rainbow. The end. Yeah, I did a kind of reverse, and oh, it was it was a pain in the ass. So but it was like, fun. If you found a blue and you had already set up that part, you just put it towards the end. You're like, all right, screw it. Let's go where the blues head at the end. Ah, oh, son yep, of a bitch! Yeah. <laughs> yep. Damn it! Um, it, it, and it, it was truly amazing. I, I said, I, I, I literally can't get over. Like I said, this picture. Yeah. So if you, if you have that high res one, like I said, you can send it to us because I'd love to see the high res because like I said that that needs to be a wallpaper. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, everybody says that. What's the point of you know painting your walls? You have pops when they're laid out flat. It's literally like a wallpaper. Because it goes floor to ceiling, and I love it. Yeah, it's an amazing so, wallpaper. Same. That's that's really one of the things that kind of drew me to Pops, right? They have licenses for everything, but all the figures come in the same exact box. You know, box. So I can have Thundercats next to Star Wars, next to GI Joe, next to Marvel, and I can put them all together, and they all basically look the same. Like normally, sure, maybe you have a Marvel Legends figure and like an old school GI Joe. You can't put those two together. But thanks to Funko, yeah, no. you can build those awesome walls and, and display your collection like that. I like like you live in a store. Um, that's the part that like really just drew me in. Mm -hmm. So somebody asked me on one of my my initial video where I was going through the whole collection. They're like, "What store is this?" And I was like, "It's my apartment." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. that is the biggest like compliment you can get yeah, yeah they, they couldn't they couldn't believe it i think that's a lot of the the draw right for funko pop sometimes is the the packaging it really draws you in like oh i know this series oh this character's awesome it's like nice and colorful you know like that i think that's a big part of it and they nail it with their packaging yeah i mean oh, look, yeah. How, look how awesome those pops look behind her and right it's just all the random colors and it just it's just beautiful you can't do that with any other collectible yeah, exactly. No. And, and how many other collectibles have a standardized box too? Yeah. Barbie kind of does, but not really. Yeah, like they 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 always change, but like Funko's, other than like the the different like the size variances that you have, like the the Batman's behind you and stuff. <laughs> every Funko comes in the same exact size box, so you know what it's going to be when you get it. Like I know how this is going to fit and where it goes. That no other collection that I know of really has the exact same thing every single time. Well, and even the way that they display too. So like, you know, a lot of people that collect Funkos, they don't want to take them out of the box, but you can display them really nice and easy because they've got that nice display box, you know, where you can see the figure, you don't have to take it out. It's got that cool packaging yeah. around it. You yeah. know, I collect something that like Mezco's, but it's completely closed box. You right. can't see the figure at all. So I have to take it out. 
just so you can appreciate it. So that's another cool thing about Funkos is they're, they're you know, like I said before, the packaging. Yep. It's great for in-box collectors and for out-of-box collectors because there's no seal on the box. So even right. if you want to go out of the box to take a picture or to, you know, set up a shelf for a little while, you can always dust them off and throw them right back in the box and no harm, no foul. Yeah, I've always told yeah. Larry, like, when he does his unboxing, I'm like, you took it out of the box? And he's like, dude, it's no problem. They're not sealed. I can put it right back in there. It's no big deal. No harm, no yep. foul. Now, so I, the one thing I'm noticing right behind you right now, you have a couple, like, 9-inch nine nine inch pops. Nine, nine inch, I said they were 9-inch back in the day. So now they're 10-inch. Um, how many 9-inch or, or g giant pops do you have? Uh, six. Kind of so... Nice. I have the, the the four original ones, Buzz, Batman, Maleficent, and Daryl, and then I got that damn Porg and uh, Hulk. Uh, that, so. that, that Hulk was my first was my first giant one, and then I said then I ended up getting the Thanos too. Um, but well, I, I guess I just got the Groot too. I guess yeah, you got Groot. Didn't I give you Groot? Yeah, you, you yeah, like, I, I, bought, I bought the Groot from. I, Groot yeah. I am Groot. I am Groot. Um, so what, what, is, what is your opinion on, on, on the giant pops? So I know, I know some people love them, some people hate them. What, what, is, what is your personal opinion on, on the giant pop? That they need to be not released just to target? <laughs> Absolutely agree. <laughs> um, it's a great starting point. So, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, I can tell you that these four, the four original ones were easier to obtain than the target ones will ever be. These ones we got online. Um, the Batman, not the Batman, the Buzz Lightyear, a friend from work actually gave me because he's like, I gave this to my son. He's not interested. Do you want it? I said, yeah, of course. Knowing what I knew in my head, what it was worth. And he's like, yeah, you can have it. So I'm tired of target pops. 150%. I'm tired of target releases. I am tired of it. Just if they're not going to make enough available to everybody, then why make them? That's my opinion on the, the 10 inches. Cause I got the Hulk when I took a whole bunch of my extra pops into a store in Seattle and I traded for him and they were trying to sell him for 80 bucks. Yeah. And I just think that's ridiculous. Yep. So. No, I, I agree. I said, I think there needs to be some, some, some changes in regards to that. I, the, the, the 10 inch, like I said, I didn't like them at first. They slowly grew on me. Um, and like I said, as I started to kind of stare at them, I said a, a little bit more because I'm like, man, I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I'm already starting to like run out of room and stuff because so besides, like I said, pops and stuff that I, I'm a huge comic book guy, which I've consolidated over the years. So I'm way less than, than what I, what I used to be. So I'm like, okay, I have pops and I have comics and I have all this other stuff and all these other collectibles. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I got to scale this down. I'm like these 10 inch pops are going to kill me. But then I started looking at them. Like, I'm like, look, I'm like, I actually really like these things. Um, like I didn't appreciate So when I got the Hulk originally, I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm like I wanted to have it just to have it. Cause it was, it was the first, like it was the first one in the in the new style box uh, where it's like the, the clearer on the both sides. Um, plus, I said the I said I loved Ragnarok. Like I said, as as you see by like the, the poster. Um, and I said, and, and it slowly grew on me. Um, I think that seeing that uh, I said, there's there's a, there's a couple other characters like I said that, that I'd love to see in the ten inch. So we were talking about Resident Evil earlier. How awesome would it be to have a ten inch tyrant? Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, that would be cool. I, when the, the, the six inch ones came out, he was so hard to get. Oh, wait, they don't have a tyrant. Do they have a tyrant? No, they have Nemesis. Never mind. Yes, tyrant. Sorry. I'm out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. So I, I'm going to go yeah, back just a little. Too. I'm going to ask you another question. Just going back a little bit about what we just talked about. Um, so I, I noticed that most of yours behind you are uh, sealed. So do you prefer to keep them in box? and not take them out? Or do you have some that you do take out? You're like, okay, this one, I'll do it. I am a dedicated in the box collector, dedicated. Um, I've thought about taking them out of the box. The problem is I would keep the box, so where would I put the box? Yeah, then you have twice as much so, stuff. True. Yeah, and then I just like, like there's no point. If I had a house with an addict, then yeah, I'd do that. Um, the only time I take them out of the box, I ended up getting, coming home from Virginia, and my Harley Quinn was crushed. I took her out of the box, bought a new one. My first initial Sinestro, he got taken out of the box, and I got a different one in the box. So, yeah, they they stay in the box for me, hundred percent. So it's one of those things. Unless it's damaged or you have doubles, more than likely it's staying in the box. Yeah, the the That's doubles cool. usually I do craft projects with, or I'll take it out of the box. Yeah. 
I know, yeah. Larry, you're kind of back and forth, right? Like you have some that you take out, some that you leave in, and then Jeremy's kind of the same way, right? Yeah, I have uh, a lot, most of mine that are out of the box or for a reason. Um, and damage box is probably the number one reason. Um, so yeah, like I'm hit or miss and sometimes I'll take them out and then I'll end up putting them back in. Like when I was first getting into it before, uh, before pops were getting super crazy. Um, like I had the Thor with helmet from dark world, I had dark side, you right. Uh, I, I had pops that are like up to close to a hundred bucks now just out on my TV stand because I liked them and I thought they looked cool. And then like they slowly started to climb in value. I'm like, all right, I got to put these things away. Like, cause I didn't want, like there's sunlight coming in. Like I just didn't want them to get damaged. So I go through cycles. You guys know I have, uh, I have what, like a dozen or so on my desk at work. Um, mm -hmm. Like you got to have a couple out so you can truly enjoy them. Right. I, I remember so, to Larry's point. I, I don't remember what pop it was. He had it on his desk. And he's like, he looked it up one day. He's like, I didn't, he didn't realize what the value was. It was. He's like, well, I got to take this home and put it back in the box. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it's not even worth that much anymore. It was the PX exclusive uh, Iron Fist with the white. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was like yeah, okay. forty bucks for like a couple of minutes, and I'm like, I should probably take this home before like it grows legs and you know just walks out of here. Like somebody would have probably thought it was worth more than it actually was and just tried to steal it. No, I I, I am the same way. Like I said, like I said, I have a few. Out of the box, and honestly, all my out of box ones are actually at work on the ledge yeah. of ledge of my desk. Um, and that, the that's my ones. shelf behind me. I don't, you can't see it on the the stream, but that's all the out of the box ones are up there. And mine are all damaged boxes or or doubles. Like like I said, I had six Hellboys, so obviously I got a Hellboy at my desk because um, I didn't know what to do with six of them. Like I said I gave the rest of them out. I said I kept the standard one, kept the the chase, and then gave out the rest. So we're moving to. Yeah. Which I mentioned, uh, I mentioned on our Monday stream for a top ten favorite Funko Pops. When when we're gonna talk to you for a minute, um, we're moving too. So like, uh, our house is gonna be ready till like December. So I've got some time. Um, but I like I've been thinking about this for the last couple of weeks. Like when we move, like what? How am I gonna? Like, that's my reset button. How am I gonna set everything up? Like right now, I'm kind of leaning towards like a ninety percent out of the box. I, I just wanted, I kind of want to give it a try and like see what happens. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I reserve the right to change my mind, but right this minute, I'm kind of leaning towards out of the box. She it's a little crazy. crazy. <laughs> She's like, ooh. Your collection. You can do whatever you want with your collection. I never yeah. critique. I mean, everybody got mad at Top Pops. Everybody got mad at Tristan when he put all of his Pops back in the box. And I was just like, it's his collection. Leave him alone. Like, nobody wants anybody to be free in the collecting community and that kind of pisses me off just like let people do what they want with their collections and just yeah. let it be and everybody collects their own way right. yeah and yeah i don't collect funko pops but i collect you know mezco toys figures and those are always out of the box for me every single time yeah. well especially if, if you're not gonna you're not a reseller right you're an actual collector for yeah. anyone who's an actual collector it doesn't is it in the box or out of the box doesn't really matter like at that point, it's whatever you like, right? It's kind of what I, you prefer. For a lot of my collection that I have, like for me, it's like my collection of video games. I'm never gonna sell any of them. Most of them are out of the box. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, most of the old school like NES games, you're never gonna find in a box anyway. Uh, but for any of those that I do have in box, they're never coming out. But if I wanted to take them out, who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah, it's right. yours. You spent the money, right? I'm not gonna. I'm never reselling it. Like, there's nothing in my life that I would do to resell that. Oh, but the Funko community loves to hate on everything for any oh, possible yeah. reason. Well, mm. and that's why I said that. That's why I love. I said 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 our channel, and I love. That's why I love your channel, Tiffany. Like I said it's just you. You don't. You don't care. Like I said, everyone's free to do what they want. Like I said, our channel. Like I said, if you if you try to ask people, I said. What our channel is? Are we a Funko Pop? <laughs> are we a uh, channel? No. Are we a video game channel? No. We're we're everything. We're so we're we're a Mezco channel. We're a Funko channel. We're a video game channel. We're a podcast channel. We 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 do it all just because you know what? Everybody has that one thing that they're into. I said, and if we could basically give that one person what they want to see or what they want to hear, um, you know, more more power to that. Just because I said, you know what? If you're collecting something and it makes you happy. Go out and do it. Like I said, that that's that's what the point is. I said, if, as long as you're happy and, and you're doing what you'd love to do, 
just continue to do it. Support each other too, like I said. It, it, and I can't yeah. say this in, in regards to like other channels. And like I said, and this, this is what our number one focus is. I said, it's just making sure, like I said, you're, you're supporting everybody out there. Everybody started out there with zero viewers, zero subs, zero everything. Um, like I said, I don't care if you're a small channel, big channel, or that. it doesn't matter. You know what? We're here to support everybody. Yeah. I, I agree. agree. Totally agree. I agree. You got to look out for the community, you know, when you can. And like, there's a lot of people that like to hate and like to say negative things, but you know, you got to be louder than them by being positive and trying to support a, each other. Just give them a I good old. It is like a lot of hate. <laughs> it, it happens. Oh, yeah. Like it's it's the online online presence. Like I don't know if you're if you're ever uh, checked the subreddit for Funko Pop, but. There's some oh, mean, angry uh, people on Reddit. Um, I'm just gonna say, uh, Larry. I think the best way to describe that is toxic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's so toxic there. Like I, I like my favorite community. Like YouTube's awesome, but my favorite Funko community is the Funko Message Board, right? FunkoFanatic.com. Um, there's a lot of really yeah. good people there. Like I remember we talked about that too on one of your streams when I was in the chat. Um, there's a lot of really good people there. Like that. Like we've met in person and, and all that stuff. Um, but like when you stray out of that kind of world, out of the YouTube, uh, creator part, like you get some people are just mean and nasty and just want to bring you down and just hate on everything. Um, it's a shame, yeah. but that's, that's the world we're living in right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's sad. At the end of the day, you're talking about collecting Funko pops. So yeah. why does it have to get hateful? Why does it have to get mean? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I, I just showed a collection photo when it was like at. 1100 and everybody was just like hating so bad and i'm like sorry all right i'll move on and i, I left the group and i was just like i never met such mean people yeah. because they were just like that's not fair they literally literally that's not fair was one of their comments and i'm like <gasps> what's okay? not fair yeah. what? Uh, what you my money my what? life what's not fair the we, fact yeah. that i went out of my I way to make sure I a long time. how is this not fair yeah, yeah. honestly Honestly, like that's why I haven't shown a lot of my stuff. Um, like Jer Jeremy and I were talking on our on our live stream on Monday uh, about doing like a top ten Freddy Funko video and stuff. But like, I don't want to. Like, I got some stuff I don't want to post up because I don't have anything to prove to anybody. Like, if you need to see like X, Y, and Z in my collection to know that I love Funko, then we probably shouldn't be friends. Yeah, I, I think that's the problem. Is if you tell somebody you're a collector, the qu people that are also collectors always love to question you like oh well do you have this or what what is do you have x y or z like yeah it's like, like a pissing know, battle at that point yeah, it is exactly like, yeah hey go fuck yourself i, a, I, I buy things like yeah like no everybody like, collects for different reasons yeah like it looks like the chat is is completely on board by agree with that. yeah like yeah no, I, I I had a guy in Virginia when I was in Virginia for school for the Navy and he was, I was asking for that, that Thanos on the throne. And he's like, Oh, you looking for anything else? I'm like, look, I'm out of town. I don't need anything. I was like, I got like 1600 of these things. And he instantly scoffed at me. he was just like, oh, well, Jeez. I've got 500 and half of those are chases. And I was just like, <laughs> cool. Hey. Yeah. And <laughs> do you want me to, do you want me to pat you on the back? Who the fuck are you? Like, yeah, right. right. No, and that's that's why we, we did our we did, when I said on on that's been funny. Was me and Larry did our, our favorite top ten, like so our our personal favorite. Yes, regardless, favorite. Regardless of what the value is, like I said, was, was there a couple of ones of value in there? Yeah, but at the same point in time, the one of them I showed, I, I think it's twenty three bucks, and like it's I like it just because of what it means and the story behind it. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, 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 honestly, I, I will say I'll have my favorite right here. Yeah, Deadpool. My, Deadpool. my little Deadpool chimichanga van. I, I doubt this is worth anything more than what I paid for it. <laughs> yeah, Drew's but it's my favorite. Said, like, Drew's I love this damn thing. Uh, Drew's vid said, uh, <laughs> Haters mean you're doing something right, and I think you know, like, a lot of haters are people that maybe didn't plan appropriately to get a chase pop that was going to sell out within a matter of minutes and now they're pissed off at funko because they think funko should be making more but there's all these people that you know planned and made sure they're ready and they got it so why are you like hating on it just because you didn't get it you know i think a lot of haters are just people that are salty because they're jealous of somebody else's collection 
Mm, let me lick those salty tears. Like, yeah, like so salty. So those salty tears. Like, yeah, drop the south. Every time I encounter these people, I, I'm in a. Every time I encounter them, I'm in a in a military uniform. So my my true self, where I want to snap back, I can't because I'm just like I want to rip you to shreds, but I have to walk away because. <laughs> And they get a misrepresentation of the military, and I'm like, yeah, just walk yeah. away. And at the end of the day, you're the better person, anyways. You know, you exactly. didn't stick to their level. Yep, it helps you hold True. back, so it's not a bad thing. There's an angel on my shoulder every time that happens. Like you're in here in uniform for a reason. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, clench your fist. You get so angry. You're like, I am gonna walk away right now. Yeah, I'm not right. doing that. So wh one question that I, that I wanted to ask you, Tiffany. Like, so, do you, so obviously. You collect Funko Pops. I think that's completely one hundred percent obvious. Uh, do you collect anything else? Like, it, it was there, was there anything else that got you collecting before there was Funko Pops? Uh, I have a small small comic book collection. I have I think every Lego variant cover on comic books. Um, Legos was big. I my parents used to buy me Barbies every year. For Christmas, so I have maybe like a 150 piece Barbie doll collection back in Arizona, and um, it's actually worth a good, a good couple dollars. Um, it hasn't seen the light of day in 11 years, but um, that I was. Don't, I don't know where Larry's grabbing right now. <laughs> what? Oh no, I, my oh. dog's chewing on something. <laughs> I mean, we we can do naked Barbie oh. if you want to do naked Barbie. <laughs> Oh hi, it's me, Naked no, Barbie. No. My my parents would literally buy two Barbies every Christmas. They would buy me a cheap old Barbie, and they buy me that like you know the the holiday Barbies. I have an entire yeah. collection of holiday Barbies, and so, they say you can open this one, but not this one. Yeah, no, I, so I will say that my wife is the same way. She has a collection that's. It, to rub it in, she puts it in my daughter's room in her closet, so my daughter can see all the you can't touch these Barbies in her closet. <laughs> it's really sexy. My daughter's always like, "Can I have one of those?" I'm like, "No, you can't touch those ones. Yeah. Those are Heather the special Barbies." Yeah, no, she, yeah, yeah. She like it, it's it's one thing to like hide them in her her closet, but no, she puts them in my daughter's closet. Like, yeah, those are the ones you can't touch. You see these, honey? Yeah, you can't touch yeah, those at all. Yeah. I have some Bob Mackie Barbies, and if you guys know what who Bob Mackie is, like, oh my god, my grandpa sent them to me, and I'm just like, they're just sitting there waiting. That's awesome. <laughs> it's always that one that's just non-touchable. It's like, don't touch that. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's all of the, them. All of them are non-touchable. Yeah. There's the, the the don't touch me things. Yeah, even the stuff they have out, like, you know, if somebody goes and grabs it, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa please be really careful with that. Like, don't break it. That's what I'm worried about, too. Like, I, I don't have all my stuff displayed at this house very good right now. But, like, my kids got friends and stuff. Like, if I go out of the box at the new house, it's like, uh, I'm locking that door and you're not going anywhere near it. <laughs> yeah, you're, not, you're, yep. you're not touching the collection. Nope. Sleepovers? Yeah. Nope. Off limits. <laughs> Please do not touch that or I might have to kill you. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't want to go to jail for murdering a 10-year-old. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of my stuff is action figures. So as soon as somebody picks one up, they just start bending the arm yeah. up and down. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on a second. You got to be careful with that. No, I 100% agree because I have – none of my comic books are like in any type of organization whatsoever. So there will be a $2 book and then like a $3,000 book and then a 50-cent book and then like a $5,000 book. And then they're all mixed together, because the, the, depending on what the title and everything else like that. I, said, I don't care about the values. Like I said, it just what the, they are the story of what they are. Um, but I'm like, people just thumbing through them, and I'm like, oh, no, nah, don't, don't, don't touch those. I'm like, I, I, I will touch those for you. He can. Yeah. He said, just be careful. I will hold it up so you can look yeah. at it. Yeah, like, look, don't touch. Yeah. As I'm, as I tell my my I'm, daughter every time is, look with your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> just like, do you just touch with your eyes? Just Eyes only. Yeah, I remember when someone wanted to like, <laughs> take one out and then read it. I'm like, oh no, 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 you can't, you can't do that. I'm like, that's that that that's at the car. You can't, you can't, you can't. take it out and read it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'll touch that. Uh, no, that's completely okay. No, uh, man, collecting is so much fun. I love collecting. Stuff. 
it brings people together. Like, look, look at this stream. We have all these people talking about their collections, all five of us talking about our collections. Something that you can share with others. All right. Well, one question that, like I said, I think that, that everyone, like I said, especially for the younger collectors out there or, or, or someone who hasn't started collecting yet, what is, what is the best piece of advice, Tiffany, that you could give to, to someone just starting out collecting in, in Funko? Collect what you like. Don't try to collect everything. Don't don't be like me and make that mistake where you have to be a completionist. If you like Deadpool, collect Deadpool. If you like Loki, collect Loki. But if you just just don't just don't go and spend thousands of dollars on something because everybody else has it. I know a lot of people inspire to have what I have. And I think that's uh, flattering, but I know how much I've spent to get to where I'm at. So I would only like because my my hot topic ladies, um, one of them only collects Black Panther, and that's it. One of my best friends, she only collects monsters. So, collect what you like. If you want a collection like mine, it's gonna take you five years. Trust me, <laughs> it's gonna take you a hot minute to do. And uh, use coupons and go to clearance sales online, and you'll save yourself some heartache. So I think that's the best advice: is just collect what you like. Don't. Don't strive to have a big collection because there's nothing in my collection that I don't like that I don't know what it is. Yeah, so exactly, and I'm no, not a fan of. I completely agree. Collect what you like. Um, yep. I was just thinking, mm -hmm. like that probably one of the hot things coming up this next week is going to be that 10 inch Scrooge McDuck. Like, yeah, if you've never seen an episode of Ducktales, don't go out and buy the 10 inch Scrooge McDuck. You don't need it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna go buy it because I have the the three inch one. I just think it's I don't I don't need it, so Perfect. I'm not gonna stress over it. How dare any of you say anything bad about Uncle Scrooge? First of all, <laughs> I love the design of that. The, him jumping into it's the cool. pile of money. It's yeah, awesome. It's cool, but do you really need the ten inch one? You yeah, no, I I don't have any Scrooge McDuck. So yes, the fact that you just brought up there's a ten inch one. There is. Yeah. I'm in now. Like one hundred percent. I will find. I will find it for you. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will get you the tenant screws. Like, is that yeah. gonna, is that going to be I my know, Christmas present? I, I know you. You share the affinity of Ducktales with me. Oh, Ducktales and Tailspin. And so first off, Rangers. The the greatest theme song to any show is fucking Tailspin. First of all, oh, oh, like it's oh, definitely oh, up there. Oh, oh, like oh, oh, like oh, I don't know. Like. Oh, 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 oh. Spin it oh like yeah, like no. Um DuckTale, um yeah. I that's... see your DuckTales though and raise you a Mr. Ed. <laughs> no, so first off, Mr. Ed was great, but DuckTales was the, the the literal shit back in the day. And don't try to argue with me. DuckTales was the best shit that you've ever seen in your entire life. DuckTales was amazing. But I still I have the good. original DuckTales on DVD that I force feed my goddamn daughter. So don't even test me with that shit. Uh, is there, oh, is there oh, a Mr. Ed Poplar? Droobs in the comments throwing down the gauntlet. He's, he's like, wrong. It's the Darkwing Duck theme song. No, so, so Darkwing Duck was great, but there would never be a Darkwing Duck without DuckTales. <laughs> That's a bold statement, Fair. Scott. I just want to know what Scrooge yeah. McDuck did to not die dive, diving into a... Oh, yeah, like... Points. If if you have thing, like that's that is solid. Like a bunch of coins is solid, yet somehow that dude can dive in from like fifty feet <laughs> and not splat on the ground. Like that's Family Guy did a bit on it when Peter jumped in and he like broke his leg. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah, ah. Yeah, yeah, like no, there is <laughs> I yeah. remember says yeah. I have never seen Scott so enthusiastic. You do not test. You do not test me with Ducktales. I have been a fan since I was four fucking years old. <laughs> art is a tailspin. Tailspin. I agree. Art as well. Art, it's a good man. show, man. That I, whole I love, that so, whole Disney so, afternoons thing, like yeah. Chippendales Rescue Rangers, uh, Gummy Bears. They were killing it back in the gummy 90s. Gummy bears bouncing here and there. Yeah, yeah like that's no. on a whole nother level right now. Dude, no, first, you're bringing back my too. fucking jam. Yeah, like that was the level. shit I loved. <laughs> um, <laughs> scotch. <laughs> yeah, that that's scotch awesome. In old cartoons, great uh, mix for Scott. Yeah, yeah, get me liquored up and then give me fucking 80s cartoons. Let's do it. Like, yeah, best thing ever. Well, okay, so. 
we've dominated the conversation a lot. Tiffany, what is your favorite cartoon of all time? <laughs> my my favorite cartoon of all time. They made pops out of this, um, and I attribute this to my father. Um, was the What's Opera Doc? Ooh. So What's Opera Doc with Bugs Bunny, where you know, Elmer Fudd singing "Kill the Rabbit." That yeah, was my kill favorite. Kill the rabbit. Cartoon. Kill the rabbit. It, yeah. It was. It was actually something that I cut out of one of my videos. And since this is a non um, ah, censored show, I made a comment saying that if people watched Looney Tunes more, there wouldn't be any school shootings anymore. Um, and I believe that when you put Looney Tunes back into people's freaking freaking houses, because they don't show Looney Tunes anymore. They have those baby tunes or whatever they're called. So oh, I don't know what that tunes. is. Tiny, tiny no, they tunes. Have, no, they have like Tiny Tunes was like epic fourth wall breaking like they have this new version now that's just craptastic mm -hmm. i haven't seen it however i will agree there is a direct correlation between the decline of looney tunes um cartoon watching and the increase of school shootings 100 percent. that's what we do for a living we can correlate it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah all of us do I mean, math for a job that's what we do you want me to make a graph I... <laughs> let's do it <laughs> I, I mean, I don't mean to, like, take it to a dark place, no. but, like, I literally talked to my mom about that, and I was like, whatever happened to Looney Tunes? Like, a cross-dressing rabbit kept us all sane, and now we don't have that anymore, because cross-dressing rabbits are bad. So... I can even see that. I can... It's the part of Seville, for God's sakes. Animated cartoons and after-school cartoons. So I used to come home back in the day and watch... Batman the Animated Series and all the stuff that I said, I yes. got just in time when I said I wanted to be on. I said, and then that's what I would do all day was when I, when I, when I got home from school. And then you wake up Saturday morning. It was Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, yeah. Yeah. And then Saturday morning, you wake up, and then Spider Man and the X Men are on. And then. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I bring it up all the things. They don't have it anymore. Seriously, exactly. kids, kids nowadays, they are missing out, man. We had some of the best shows when we were kids. TMNT, yes. uh, Transformers, oh. Batman the Animated Series, Spider-Man, X-Men. Ninja Turtles had a pretty awesome theme song, too. Dude, yeah, yeah. Ninja, yeah, Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles on a half shell. Ninja Power. Yeah, like... That should have Scott taken away. Oh, 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 oh. Bam. Yeah. Jeremy has the whole series in the turtle van. Next time we, we talk about a new show, I'm just going to say, Scott, take it away. <laughs> I probably <laughs> I, I, I probably know the theme song, to be honest. I, I feel like Scott has a playlist on his phone that's just TV I, show theme songs. It's I do. Spotify. He's got playlists. Yeah, he's got the so, cartoon Spotify playlist. Yeah. Favorite theme songs. So I really want that. So Emily brings up, and my wife concurs, uh, I really want Disney to bring back Gargoyles, by the way. Because uh, that show was amazing. And I think that they're, they're if making, they're gonna make if they're gonna make a movie, Gargoyles needs to be a new movie. They're making Gargoyles Pops. Yeah, so that's great. But I want something to go along with it. I want that nostalgia back. It sounds it's like, not, it's not, it's not satisfied. A, a PowerPoint on our presentation of the correlation between <laughs> well, well, I know just the guy to make that PowerPoint. Yeah. Look at it, you, Jeremy. So, Jeremy. My wife brings this up. PowerPoints. So I my am. wife brings this up t just today. You th talk about theme songs. Uh, somebody had, she was like going through Instagram and somebody had the Pac Man theme on. And I was like, is someone playing Pac-Man? Like, I didn't even see the picture. I just heard the song for like three seconds. And I was like, is someone playing Pac-Man? She's like, yes, and how the hell do you know that? Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, Pennywise <laughs> <was> <laughs> that with <laughs> Google Power Rangers. Power Rangers, amazing. Oh, yeah. Rust like, Man, Rust Man with a deep cut, the Super Mario cartoon. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. I forget I'm, how that starts, but it was good. Right? Like something about like hanging with the brothers? Yeah. Like th that's the show that everyone wants to like, kind of distance themselves from. But they all watch, but don't want to admit that they watched. Oh, everybody watched. We didn't care that it was bad because it was Mario. And then they had the live action versions at the like the first yeah, like Captain, five minutes. Captain Lou Albano. Right. Oh so, yeah. 
you love Mario so much that you just watch it to hope that eventually it got good. Yeah. Like, and then I, I hope this turns out. around sometime. Yeah. yeah, and that's where you found out that his name was was legitimately Mario Mario. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> that is yeah. awful. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so where it was. Horrible. That's where it was confirmed. Well, hey, at least it was Mario, better. Mario, and Luigi Mario. At least the cartoon was better than the live action movie. movie. All right, yeah. Teen Collector brings up Rugrats. I, I like yeah. All right. right. So let, before we close out this week's episode, because we just went on a crazy side tangent about <laughs> after school cartoons <laughs> singing their song. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, uh, I need to go on a uh, so f- to Iron Archer's point. Uh, just before we close out, I need to go on a game show of name that theme song because I could probably do pretty well on that fucking show. Uh, as long as we're talking about eighties and So midweek live stream <laughs> challenge of game show uh, theme song. Or like, oh yeah, song? Um, Scott just signed himself up. Yeah, like I, it's not a podcast topic, but we can do a midweek live stream. Oh, I think it'd be fun. I, I think it'd be someone, fun. someone I know is good at designing games. Are you talking Ooh. about yourself? I yeah. am talking about myself. <laughs> I play Which, can I play? I want to play. Does, Jeremy yeah, no, for we'll, himself. We'll have some, we'll have some guests. Welcome to play the game. I yeah. said, if he wants to play the game, we can play the game. We should we should invite all of our YouTube friends to play yeah, this game. Go. To do it, yeah. No, that would be a good... So we want to do a one-year anniversary like yeah. game of like name that podcast or like name that like theme song or we will play, us play we'll for something like that is an amazing game we will invite all of our youtube friends over to to play i said we will we will play i will design the game we will play it communication to come at a later point in time but this is going to happen people like i said we're, we're, we're gonna create this game i like it <laughs> so before we go though i said anybody in the chat like i said does anybody have any final questions for our lovely guest tiffany and her amazing Funko collection. Well, while we're doing that, don't forget to check out the Funko Corner on YouTube. The link is in the notes. If you're not already subbed, be sure to sub her up. She does awesome videos, amazing collection. Definitely go go sub her up. You can find her on Instagram too. Um, that link is also in the notes. Go follow her, double tap all her pictures, all that good stuff. Well, thanks for being here, Funko Corner. It was great to get to know you a little bit more. Yes, for sure. I would love to do it again. If yeah, you ever definitely. need a guest, I'm always down to do it. And I'm probably free for the next couple Saturdays because I'm trying to avoid packing my pops. <laughs> hey, if I can support procrastination, I'm all about that. <laughs> There's nothing I love more than procrastinating. So <laughs> that that is literally, I think we all the, the scripture of myself. Like yeah. I, I am procrastination incarnate. Like on my LinkedIn, I need to update it in skills for procrastination. <laughs> so we do have a couple questions. We have Pennywise Liz. Have you? Uh, do you have the full Pennywise set? So from no, I, think, I, think... I have, I have three. And then I have our, I have the original the original Pennywise the Hot Topic Pennywise and the Walmart Pennywise and that's it. I was gonna say, are any of them the like nineteen eighties Pennywise? I have the the original one. Yes, I have the original Tim Curry, Tim Curry Pennywise. Yes, <laughs> my uh, my favorite of the Pennywises. I think Emily, that one's my favorite too. Yeah. Emily says she doesn't have any questions, yeah. but she loves your collection. Oh, thanks. Uh, Albessa is asking. Chunky McFlash is asking. Uh, are you almost done packing? And she, I think she, I think nope. Tiffany's answered that she's she's procrastinating. <laughs> she's got some of it going. Art Miranda says Tiffany, if you can make one pop exist, which would it what? be? No, no, it's one pop not exist. Oh, which, okay, which? Oh, I misread that. My, my good calls, Scott. Drunk Scott. Drunk Scott. <laughs> I'm not even that bad. I'm just in a good mood today. So, I mean, it technically does exist because I have one in my collection, but a legit Albert Wesker. Or a Pierce yeah. Nivens, or a Chris Redfield, or, you know, a Sheva Alomar. Yeah. <laughs> Any of those so, Resident Evil characters. So, that's so you, don't, you do you want a uh, Chris Redfield punching the boulder to bring back a, a joke in the chat? Just yes. him punching that, punching yes. that big-ass rock and somehow making that move? Yes. <laughs> Even though that doesn't that doesn't physics the laws of physics, no. It doesn't make sense. 
My my favorite aspect of Resident Evil is Chris Redfield punching a giant ass boulder, a boulder, and making it move. Boulder. By the way, on professional, that's a pain in the ass. On professional, to do. Yeah. No. In any setting, it was a pain in the ass to do, and the fact that him punching it actually makes it move is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my entire life. He's on steroids. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> he went from little tiny stick figure in Resident Evil 1 to this massive mountain of a man in 5. He, he slimmed down for 6, and then he slimmed down again in 7. Spoilers if you haven't played 7, but he, he slimmed down again, so he needs to make up his mind. Gotta be that tofu. Yep. <laughs> no, like, yeah, that's what happens when you stop taking steroids. <laughs> so, on that note, Larry, give us a shill because I said I could shill, but nothing nothing makes my week like a Larry shill. Oh, thank you. Um, so, if you're not already following us on Instagram, check us out at SDS Guys. You can find us on Twitter at SDS Guys, and we're on Facebook at the SDS Guys, and I am Larry from the SDS Guys. Showing like a villain. Uh, if you enjoy the content we're producing, uh, be sure to sub to our YouTube channel and give this video a big fat thumbs up. Uh, we're also on Patreon. Uh, you can kick us a couple bucks uh, if you want us to keep creating awesome content. Um, everything, like anything helps, as little as a dollar, kick us out a dollar. We put everything right back in the channel, like Jeremy's holding up that pop. That's exactly where that money came from. So uh, shout out to our favorite Patreon, Drew. Um, that dude's awesome. Um, you guys can be awesome too. Oh yeah, Casual Unboxing, that guy's awesome. Check him out, check out his contest. Um, and you can find our Patreon at patreon.com slash STS, guys. And congrats again to Charles. Winner of the Yay. Super Mega Funko Pop Grail giveaway. Charles. Go, Charles. Congrats, Brian Rainey. Like I said, it was awesome to have you back in, in, in the stream, my friend. Like I said, Welcome it, back, it, Brian. Yeah, welcome yeah, back, Brian. Brian. Thanks for coming in. And awesome to have Emily, Iron Archer, Nerd Smithing, yes. Heather Bradshaw, Chunky Monkey for Life, Russ Man, and everyone else who is in the chat today. And super mega awesome of Tiffany from the Funko Corner to come hang out with us for the last 90 minutes. Thank you. All right. So for episode 40 of the STS Guys, I've been Jeremy. Hey, it's Larry. Hey, guys. It's been Nate. And I'm Scott. And we're the STS Guys. Have a great night, everyone. Bye. Bye.